free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy, and Twitter is the digital town square where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated, proclaims the famous billionaire Elon Musk, who owns SpaceX, Tesla, and Twitter. He has described himself as a free speech absolutist, but he has a bizarre way of showing this. Although he has stated he hopes even his worst critics remain on Twitter, because that is what free speech means to him, many such critics have found themselves blocked by this great free speech warrior. Furthermore, Musk has fired some of his employees and even threatened to sue bloggers for criticizing him. In the same vein, recently Musk suspended a Twitter account for defending attraction to youth, saying that's not tolerated on his platform. Up next, I shall comment on a video on this by a channel called Zafgan News and give my 5 cents. Elon Musk, the billionaire tech CEO and founder of SpaceX and Tesla, has suspended a Twitter user who created a youth-attracted person flag to support pedophiles. First off, as you can see, this is not an instance of somebody breaking the law. It's just a guy advocating people attracted to youth and wishing to share a flag he designed for them. Honestly, I'm attracted to youth. Not children though, but young adults. It only makes perfect biological sense as young people are more fertile. Yet, Musk reacted to this like it was the most heinous thing ever. But for the sake of argument, say this person means attraction to children. Well, he's still just sharing a flag he made and voicing his opinion, which I thought Twitter was all about. The account under the username Potluck Pony had posted the blue, white, pink, and yellow flag on their timeline, claiming it was for Alice Day, a sick pseudo holiday created by some to celebrate pedophilia. He's trying to sound all informative, neutral, and factual, and then he calls a holiday sick. If you feel that way, there's an easy solution. Don't celebrate it then. It's not like you hear about the Alice Day unless you go looking for mentions of it on the internet anyway. In response to a post from Dr. Anastasia Maria Lupus, who praised Musk for suspending the account, Musk wrote that such behavior is not tolerated on this platform. I did some digging and verified that Anastasia Maria Lupis is in fact a medical doctor, but her field of expertise has got nothing to do with pedophilia. Not saying she can't still have an opinion on it, but don't be fooled into thinking she might be some authority. In fact, I have a hard time just taking her seriously at all. Her Twitter feed is an absolute mess of radical right-wing crap. It's mainly about two things, antagonizing trans folks and spreading anti-vaccine propaganda, which is hilarious since she's supposed to be a doctor and care for people's mental and physical health. But back to her response to Musk, she praises him for doing amazing things for humanity, by first hypocritically vouching for free speech only to rob marginalized people of it, a population so unfathomably trampled on that they don't even have a term that doesn't mean sex criminal to most of the public. This incident highlights a growing trend of pedophiles feeling more comfortable in expressing their deviant views publicly, especially in the digital era. I love how he felt necessary to clarify that we live in the digital era, as opposed to the bronze age or something. The digital era has been around for fucking decades. I mean, what's next? Is he going to talk of the great invention of color television? Anyway, our fake journalist tries to dismiss map activism by calling the views deviant, as if the popularity of a view had some bearing on its validity. To make matters worse, much of the content he displays on the background is actually made by conservative trolls attempting to link pedophilia and the LGBT. While minor attracted people can certainly be considered a sexual minority, in my books at least, it speaks volumes of the level of journalism here that it doesn't even differentiate between real map activism and false flags trying to smear the gay and trans people. And speaking of conservatives, although they always seem to be complaining about anything to perceive as leftist censorship, now not insignificant number of them are celebrating Musk for having suspended the map account, to which I shall respond in Noam Chomsky's words. If we do not believe in freedom of expression for those we despise, we do not believe in it at all. The fact that the account had amassed over 2,000 followers highlights the growing trend of pedophiles feeling free to express their views online. Although social media companies have been taking steps to curb the spread of such content, there have been reports of an increase in child sexual exploitation and trafficking in recent years. 
The problem with this guy is that he's trying way too hard to sound professional, because in doing so, he repeatedly fails to cover even the basics of sound journalism, in this case citing his sources. Nevertheless, even though we can't verify those reports, say they are true and in fact illustrate a real trend of increase in crime instead of increase in reporting of such crime, well, then censoring non-abusive map content on platforms like Twitter clearly doesn't seem very effective if there's a negative correlation between that and reduction in child exploitation. Here's a thought, instead of attempts to sweep pedophilia under the rug, perhaps facilitating maps help seeking might prove more productive? This has prompted concern from experts who fear that criminals have become savvier about avoiding detection online and are exploiting children more easily than before. Once more, he doesn't cite any of these experts. That being said, I'm all for prohibiting harmful behavior online or offline, but his choice of focusing on criminals when the topic is merely expressing views on pedophilia is just arguing in bad faith and showcases the general sloppiness of Safka News' take on this. Now, in case some of you weren't aware, Elon Musk seems to have a weird obsession with pedophiles overall. Four years ago, he baselessly accused a diver who rescued a children trapped in an underwater cave a pedophile. What prompted his attack on the diver was the latter's refusal to use Musk's mini-submarine in the rescue mission. It just had absolutely no chance of working, Unsworth said in a widely shared interview. He had no conception of what the cave passage was like. The submarine, I believe, was about 5 foot 6 inches long, rigid so it wouldn't have gone round corners or round any obstacles. Admittedly, the diver also called Musk's offer a PR stunt, which probably was a bit unnecessary. Regardless, out of petty spite, Musk branded him a pedophile in front of his millions of subscribers in a tweet saying, sorry pedo guy, you really did ask for it. I don't know if this is the case of power corrupting, an absolute power corrupting absolutely, but it might just be. Still, many regard Elon Musk as a revolutionary. Personally, I don't want anything to do with a world that needs to be revolutionized by hampering freedom of thought and shutting down debate. That's all I have. Thanks for listening.